The word cardinality is just a fancy way of saying the size of a set or the number of elements in a set. So let's say we have this set 1, 77, 6. Uh, the cardinality of this set is the number of elements in here. So there's one, two, three elements in here. So the cardinality of this set is three. And the way we write that down is like this. So we write those little vertical bars around the set, and that's the notation most commonly used to denote the cardinality of a set. So this equation right here says, the cardinality of this set containing one, 77, and six is equal to three. Uh, let's look at another example. So let's say we have the set two, four, six, eight, and, and so on, up to 100. So what's the cardinality of this set? Well, there's 100 numbers from 1 to 100, and this is the even one, so this is half of them. So half of 100 elements would be 50. So the cardinality of this set is 50. Uh, what about the empty set? So the cardinality of the empty set is 0, because there are no elements in here. Uh, what about the set containing the empty set? So this set has one element inside of here, and that one element is the empty set. So the cardinality of this set is 1. So let's say we had the set 7 and 11. And we had the set 4, 22, and 13. And we want to know which of these sets is larger, which of them has a higher cardinality. And since these sets are so small, it's simple enough to do that just by counting how many elements are in each of these. So we can say this set has two elements, this set has three elements, and three is bigger than two, so this set has a higher cardinality than that one. But if these sets had thousands of elements or millions of elements, that would be difficult to do because it just takes so long to count how many elements are in a set with thousands or millions of elements. So I'm going to show you a different way to compare the size of sets. I'll say it in a kind of scary abstract statement first and then I'll show you some examples a little bit later. So we have x and z, these are sets, and the statement is the cardinality of x is less than or equal to the cardinality of z if there exists an injective injective function if there exists an injective function f which maps from x to z if you don't know exactly what an injective function is that's fine so a function is just something that maps all the elements from one set to another set. Um, say I could map 7 to 4 and 11 to 13. And an injective function is basically a function where all of the arrows point to different places. So in order to be injective, no two elements in here can point to the same place in here. So for example, uh, the function I just drew where 7 maps to 4 and 11 maps to 13, this is injective. This is injective. Um, but if I were to pick a different mapping, say if I were to map both 11 to 4 and 7 to 4, um, if I were to map uh, 7 to 4 and also 11 to 4, this would be not injective. This would be not injective. Since there exists an injective function from this set to this set, this statement tells us that this set is less than or equal to that set, which you probably already already knew without all this complicated stuff, but there you go. Um, okay, so let's add one more element to this set. So let's say we had 7, 11, and 14. And we wanted to map to 4, 22, 13. Um, so 
there's still an injective function. I could map 7 to 4, or 11 to 13, and 14 to 22. Um, so this set is still less than or equal to that set uh, because there exists an injective function. Uh, but what if I add yet another element? So let's say I have 7, 11, 14, and 111. And I'm trying to map to 4, 22, 13. So let me use the same mapping I did before. I'll map 7 to 4, 11 to 13, and 14 to 22. But now there's no room for me to map to a new place from 111. No matter where I map 111 to, um, it'll go to the same place as another element. So if I mapped it to 13, it'll go to the same place that 11 went to. So no matter how I do it, there's no injective function from this set to this set. And that's because this set is larger than that set. So let me write a corollary to this statement over here that uh, the cardinality of x is greater than the cardinality of z if there does not exist an injective function. There does not exist an injective function uh, f from x to z. There's a few other ways to compare the cardinality of sets by using different sorts of functions between them. So this time I'll say the cardinality of x is greater than or equal to the cardinality of z if there exists a surjective, a surjective function from x to z. And let me create an example here. So I'll have a set 1, 2, 3, 8 to the set 3, oops, that's not a 3, uh, 3, 5, 8. And a surjective function is a function where everything in here has an arrow pointing to it. So 3 has an arrow pointing to it, 5 has an arrow pointing to it, 8 has an arrow pointing to it. So this is a surjective mapping from this set to that set. If I were to draw the arrows a different way, say I mapped 1 to 5, 2 to 5, 3 to 8, and 8 to 8, then there would be no arrows pointing to 3, and this would not be a surjective mapping. Um, since a surjective mapping exists from this set to this set, that means that the cardinality of this set is higher than the cardinality of this set. Okay, and there's a corollary to this. The cardinality of x is less than the cardinality of z if there does not exist a surjective function from x to z. So. If I had this set 1, 2, and this set 3, 5, 8, no matter how I drew the arrows here, there would be no way to cover all of the elements in here. So in this example, 5 has no arrow pointing to it, and this is not a surjective mapping. And since there's no way to create a surjective function from this set to this set, that means the cardinality of this set is smaller than the cardinality of that set. And finally, uh, the cardinality of x is equal to the cardinality of z if there exists a bijective function, a bijective function from x to z. So let me use 1, 2, 3, and 3, 5, 8. And I'll use this mapping where 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 8, and 3 goes to 5. So uh, all of these arrows point to different places. So this is an injective function, and every element in here is pointed to by some arrow. And so this is a surjective function. And since it's injective and surjective, that means it's a bijective function. And since there's a bijective function between these two sets, they have the same cardinality.